we're the last presentation before lunch, so bear with us. This is a good one. This is a good one. Um, thank you, Jaroslav, for joining us. Um, this whole section of the, the, the day has been a lot about sort of the business in VR and coming from the game industry. We've been very, I mean, virtual reality has been on the, the tips of everyone's tongues for more than 20 years since I've been in it. That's what gamers have looked for and stood out since time memoriam in gaming. And 2016 was a year where we all thought, you know, there it is, we're going to have it. And we've had some ups and downs. <laughs> we've had some hardware, but increasingly, fortunately, the hardware makers have continued to invest. We've seen some great technology, particularly in 2019. Um, we've been looking for that breakout hit. And with something like Beat Saber, I think it's really been able to tap into something that Jaroslav's going to talk about more uh, further. But it's really been a hit that we see 5 million units of VR happen last year. That'll be increased this year. And games like this from an independent studio um, are really doing something to help broaden that, that base of gamers. So we're really happy to have you here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think we have a video. Should we first, who, show of hands, we can't really see them. Who's played Beat Saber? And if you haven't, shame on you. It's really, really <laughs> fun. Um, maybe we show the video first. And we do have sound. You can hum, right, if we don't have sound? As a composer? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm used to it that there is no sound with Beat Saber. Um, <laughs> usually. <laughs> So this is actually the the video would make uh, would make Beat Saber kind of uh, really popular. Is she like a professional saber person? Uh, no. no, but okay. she's she uh, that's one she worked for Life. Um, this is company uh, focusing on mixed reality okay. uh, solutions and. Uh, actually, the the way how it happened was that uh, we released the first teaser. Uh, 30 seconds teaser what went crazy viral on Twitter and then guys from Life um, they were all already playing with our pre-release build okay. and then they released this video and this went completely crazy uh, on pr everywhere pretty much like Facebook yeah it was it was insane great it's just like Xeno princess warrior or something um, <laughs> So let's dial back a moment. Tell us how you begin. So the genesis of Beat Saber, Beat Games, you, the, the team, give a little background to the audience. Uh, yeah, so basically the, the game was developed and created uh, by, by uh, Jan Ilavsky. He is the programmer behind the, behind the game. And he was working for a long time with uh, Vladimir Hrinchar, who is uh, his friend from primary school. So they know each other for from forever, and uh, they work, they, I think they start working on the game around 2016, uh, because Jan really, uh, he just bought the headset, and he just want to try to do something what he liked to play by himself, which is always the best approach, I guess. And uh, then in mid-2017, they released very, early alpha version of uh, like video from Beat Saber. Um, and it wasn't well received, but I seen it on, um, on Facebook. And uh, at that time I was in Los Angeles and I was composing music for trailers for Star Wars and Blizzard, uh, Overwatch and Starcraft and stuff like this. It connected already to like the gaming. Yeah, yeah. And this was actually my path because I'm musician or I, trying to consider myself as a musician. But uh, but I've seen that, and before I composed soundtrack for uh, one game before for virtual reality. Um, it's called uh, Blue Effect. And uh, I was like kind of skeptical if VR can be the future. I really wish it can, but but I was like, eh, it's it's not there yet. I really haven't seen the the use what will make me to play it every day. Uh, but when I've seen the video, it immediately like lightened something in my head that this is something what I really want to play every day. And 
I immediately fi find out who is the studio behind who, who make the video because I thought that this is like some AAA studio. Uh, and it was funny because I find that those guys who are behind it are actually located in Czech Republic and I'm in Ch from Czech Republic as well. So I immediately uh, book a ticket and I flew back to Czech Republic from LA and I uh, I tried to convince uh, Jan that uh, I will make a soundtrack for this game. And it was funny because he told me like, yeah, we wanted to contact you, but we thought that you are too expensive. <laughs> So so I was like laughing and so I sent them I, I think first two songs and Jan actually put it into the into the game and make that 30 seconds video from that. And he put it on Twitter even without asking me because I was like making trailers was my living <laughs> back then. I was like, why is there that sound pop in the end? You know, it's it was like but the trailer went completely crazy, and uh, then I thought that it's the right time to form a company and uh, start really like focusing on it 100%. And uh, then the Beat Games was formed. Yeah. Okay. And so, going back to, in terms of that process with Beat Saber, um, maybe we talk about sort of the, are you, well, I, the last numbers I read, you had like a million um, about February. It's probably significantly higher now, huh? Is there anything official? Well, we announced the million because like, we are not a profit-driven company in the first place. Uh, and the only reason why we announced or we published that we sold million copies was because of the industry. I, I deeply believe that industry needs to know that we are, that you can make decent living by selling VR games, and most importantly, uh, that it's important to bring AAA uh, studios into the into the space, who can make like some really high budget um, games, which will attract the mainstream, and that's the only reason why we announced that. So I think our mission is accomplished in that, and uh, we are not planning to announce any more numbers because uh, we don't want to be attacked by anybody. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's the game is selling really well. And what's interesting about Beat Saber, just you know, it's like Fruit Ninja meets Guitar Hero type of situation. It sort of taps into all those going back to Dance Dance Revolution, those desires for for movement in games, which is really counter to what, as I've talked to game studios over the years, when we talked about VR, it was like you need immersive storytelling, you need to have narratives to engage people. Beat Saber is absolutely not that. So what do you think has been sort of critical to the success of Beat Saber? Uh, from my standpoint point of view, it's uh, the connection uh, with fun and music. The music is really, it, it, can, it works for everybody. I, I don't know a person who doesn't like the music. Uh, also, the most important thing uh, is that it's extremely easy to understand. Like, I, I knew that this will be success when my mom looked on the game and like she seen the trailer like for three seconds and she immediately started to do this with, with her hands. And yeah, and I, I knew that she, she get it it's like instantly. And it's kind of problematic when the medium is so new yeah. and you want to introduce it to as many people as possible. So you will show them awesome game, but they are like, yeah, I don't get it. And they, they just lose interest and Beat Saber do exact opposite thing. It just like brings the attention immediately and the person understand it in a few seconds and then everybody wants to try it. Therefore, they are starting to be interested about the VR hardware and uh, how to, you know, how to try it. So that's, you know, there is no one factor what will make the VR game successful, but it needs to be the lineup of the things what will make for the player easier to get to the to that game so so it, it's it's not easy but it's it's definitely doable mm -hmm. and you talked about releasing that video going viral were there anything else related to the launch of the game that you did or how, how did that launch go what did you learn any tips for any other well i a lot of 
a lot of times I heard that uh, the gaming studios are uh, complaining that they don't have budget for PR. Uh, we spent, I can tell you precisely the price, we spent zero dollars on marketing, like whatsoever. And uh, it's really important to make something what will be well received in the first place because same like you know even uh, Tesla is doing this approach when you are trying to focus on the product and make it as best as possible it will market itself so you really doesn't need any special budgets or any special like PR team to market your game when when the game is you know viral or or you know that people in the game will look really really good and it will be interesting for them to try that game to make awesome videos where they will be involved. Mm -hmm. Then you don't need any PR budget because those videos will be everywhere and this is free free PR. So we really didn't do anything special and because at that point we were a super small team, we were three free people, then we had Misha and she she helped she helped us with social networks so she she were just like rep replying on twitter mm -hmm. and and things like this but we really didn't have anything what will what will be like different or what will make our strategy special really and is it like you didn't receive outside investment as well i understood no and how big is the team now uh we have uh, around nine nine people so we are we are super small and we have we don't have intention to become like huge because uh, uh, we don't want to become like managers because we are trying to be good in things what we do. But uh, yeah, I think that we are right now is in the in the point where uh, developers who are making games uh, should be in smaller teams because there is no such a stress that you won't be able to pay 50 people in the building. Uh, with AAA Studio, it's a little bit different because they already are established and they can like discover, discover a field, and they definitely have budgets for uh, making something awesome, what will attract a lot of people. Uh, but if you are an indie developer and you you want to make VR game, uh, it's really possible to do it in like two people or three people, and it can be massive success. So. Rewinding back to like 2017, having knowledge that you have now of the industry, of what's happened, what would you wish you knew back when you started out? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think I was always expecting that we will make a lot of mistakes during the way. Uh, and uh, I'm still expecting that, but because we were, everything was happening so nat naturally, and we we actually never pushed anything. Uh, there wasn't that much room for error, uh, and I have to say that I'm pretty proud on the direction where we are going or what we done. Uh, I I sort of wish that I would know how complicated it is to work with the music in general, how to license it, but. At the same time, it's good that I didn't knew it because if I would knew it, I would never go <laughs> go into that. But uh, it actually brings me to the direction that uh, I know that this needs to change. And with Beat Saber, we are really trying to make new ways how to license music and how explain to the industry that music in games is extremely important and needs to be licensed in different way, which will be actually beneficial for major labels as well. And uh, so yeah, so these these little things I learned a lot of about teams and uh, about stuff like this. But I think I think it was it was great to see that uh, you really can do um, big things even without like outside investments, even without uh, you know a huge team behind you, or even without knowledge. Because uh, guys, they never made VR game before. Uh, I I'm. I never developed any game before, but somehow when you are really focusing on on the product and you you are doing something what you want to play by yourself and it's and even the prototype like when uh, I remember when Ian told me and showed me the first the very first version of the game what he did after like two hours, so there was just like cube and stick 
and the cube was flying towards you and it just jumped and you, you slash it. And this was like such a fun, so it didn't need any like fancy graphics or anything. Just just the prototype was extremely fun. So if you make something what is super fun to play in prototype phase and it makes exciting everybody around you, you are probably on good path to really successful game. So and then everything will evolve. You just then need uh, good people to surround be surrounded with. So so yeah. Um, now, my friends in the industry, going to something like Gamescom, they're like, if I have to hear another studio say, we're the next Beat Saber, or like, our experience is that. So tell me about a little bit about certain other experience, not Beat Saber, but that you're excited by. And I know you're doing something a little bit different, and maybe you can talk about that to the audience as well. Um, well, there is... There is a lot of experience I'm really excited about. I'm still trying to discover why those exp those experiences are not working that well, and it's still kind of a surprise for me because I really, I actually really hope that there will be really soon some game which will be more successful than VR from in other different, which will bring different angle into VR because the same as Beat Saber when Beat Saber became huge hit. A lot of other games uh, seen significant boost in sales because Beat Saber bring a lot of people to VR, and I think that right now VR needs some other type of Beat Saber which will work differently in different genre, which will bring into VR a different sort of audience. Uh, but I'm I'm really big fan of Moss. This is that mouse running around, and uh, actually even my girlfriend she she loves it as well. And uh, and I think that's 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 pretty good game. But what is important, and what I when I when I think about it, why Beat Saber is so so like uh, well received, is because the the immersion with your full body and with the music, uh, which is instant fun for everybody across age, across gender, you know, this is something what. I think if people will learn from this, they can start making concepts which won't be like Beat Saber, Copycat, but you know some some different genre which will just use those those things and uh, be successful. So so yeah. Only thing what I see what is kind of problem is that when developers are trying to port PC games to VR and expect that it will be successful, uh, VR needs desperately new approach uh, and thing from the scratch, brand new game mechanics uh, because it's just different. It's just different medium than than PC, and you are behaving differently in VR, and you are using it differently. So it really needs different different approach. And uh, I personally think that there might be like the next Beat Saber. Uh, it's the the direction. Uh, and the game mechanics, it's not there yet. It needs to be something really uh, innovative and brand new. And maybe uh, we are still waiting for the hardware to come into into better frame rates and, and lighter version. But uh, I'm really optimistic that there will be, in, in the future, uh, much more successful games than Beat Saber is at the moment. I have many more questions to ask you, but we don't have a lot of time. But I'll turn it. Is there anybody in the audience that has any question about Beat Saber? No? Yeah. Oh, okay, please. Well, I mean, I just saw it here on the screen. So, I mean, you just said, you know, playing a game in the eyes, of course, very different from playing a game in 2D. But uh, what I just saw um, seems to be very 2D. So, when you uh, kind of, you know, hack the things apart, slash the things apart, how was the VR? Well, uh, the biggest advantage of VR in general is that uh, if you are there, you are focusing, your focus is 100% in the game or in the application on where you, you are not, if you see the screen, you see everything around me, like crowd, and the focus is there. So you are experiencing 
your experience is much more pow powerful. But because you are there and those cubes are actually flying towards you, you feel that they are going towards you and you have to do something. And when you cut into the rhythm, it's, it's I don't know, it, I can't even describe it. When people seen the no, teaser for the first time, it went viral because people seen like 2D screen and they said, that's cool. But the reason why it's selling so well is that it's like 10 times cooler in actual VR because you are there and you have to like kind of dance in, into into that. And when you are watching the screen, you are not dancing. You are just like seeing what's happening. You are understanding what's happening, but there is no interaction with you. But in VR, you are kind of forced to do the interaction and you are physically experiencing the music, which is brand new, which is brand new experience. Physical... Well, just if you if you you are experiencing different world. This is this is not possible to experience on the earth. Like at least I don't I don't know about it. But if if you are there and if you are forced to physically experience things, that's that's super immersive and super fun. And that's that's the reason why probably people are so into it. So also we just uh, we just show the 360 version of Beat Saber. So the cubes are going from more directions. This is the next step, but uh, but just this, just this, you should try it. You will you will see immediately. <laughs>